Welcome back everybody. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today I've got a special guest that's going to be doing some shooting for me here. This is Remington Little. Hi. He is the uh, 2016 NRA Youth uh, Shooting Sports Ambassador. That's a mouthful, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> He's also in college uh, for mechanical engineering. Correct. Really brilliant guy. We're going to have him do some shooting here. So you're inquiring a little bit about uh, vintage rifle matches with the right. NRA. Yep. Uh, so the Civilian Marksmanship Program runs vintage rifle matches out of Camp Perry every summer. And one of the rifles allowed in the matches is the K31. So I figured while I was here visiting, why not try one out and see how I like it. Absolutely. So he's very new to this rifle. We're going to get his initial approach. We've got a little bit of a thunderstorm going on around us, but we're not yep. going to let it ruin our day. Nope. Uh, here we've got a 1945 uh, K31. Uh, this particular one is set up with a set of original diopters and wow. it's got a Sentra Iris. So okay. The iris on this particular gun has been upgraded to the Sentra, which is a little bit more modern than the ones that they originally put on it. Okay. These diopters are set up for 300 meter shooting. Now I know nice. that some of those are, go out to 600, right? Yeah, they do. So these can be adjusted out to six, but right now we're gonna have you on 300 yards Sounds out good. here, or meters rather. The ammunition that you're running is some 1979 GP11 service ammo. Okay. And uh, this stuff uses a 174 grain Cupra nickel jacket. It's kind of like a nickel alloy. Nice. Helps with uh, erosion, helps with fouling. It really is an excellent uh, service round. And, yeah. it, and it is actual service ammunition that you're shooting. So wow. this is some of the earlier stuff. It's got kind of a waxy uh, coating on the mouth right there. Oh that's, yeah, look at that. Yep, that's normal. Very cool. Okay, so you're going to be shooting some of that. I'm going to get behind here on the spotter. Sounds and good. Uh, what we're going to do is just have you concentrate on groups. Okay. And uh, let's just kind of see what you can uh, come up with there at three. And let's just do some shooting, have some All fun. Right. Uh, let you have a few shots with this thing, see how you do. Sounds good. Let's do it. All right, we've given Remington a couple of cider shots just to get his diopter suited for his eyesight. I think we're ready to shoot for record here. All right. He's going to take some shots at 300. We're just going to try to group the gun for him, kind of see where it's at. We got a little uh, thunderstorm rolling through, but we're not going to let it ruin our day. Nope. All right, good to go. Whenever you're ready, take your time. Sounds good. Bullseye it and uh, shoot your group. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Dead center. Nice. Right on the money. And take your time. not a terrible triangulation. All right. Might be able to improve on that at some point, but keep shooting. Yeah. Let's get more used to it. That's a nice trigger though. I can't say we've ever filmed in a thunderstorm before, but we're going to go for it. Perfect conditions to be sighting in a rifle. Yeah. <laughs> Good headwind. Lightning oh. and rifle report at one time. Like, that's going to be a meme somewhere. I just know it is. <laughs> I don't know how well it picked up, but that was pretty cool. Oh, wow. Good. Keep doing that. I think I got one more round. That's an excellent group. Man, excellent shooting. That's so, it. So look, your first shot yeah. hit uh, maybe about three inches high from the rest of them, but okay. your last five shots fell into probably about a three inch circle. So wow. that's good. That's, that's maintaining impressive. MOA. Yeah. I mean, they're one minute guns if you do your part. For sure. That's some definite, 
Definite match winning accuracy right there. I think so. I think that gives you something to, so I'll tell you what, why don't you load another mag and uh, okay. this time try some of the other fun targets out there. All right. Thing's shooting pretty good. Can't say we've ever made a video in a thunderstorm, but you know, first time for everything. Yeah. I think the Millsurp gods are speaking. Yeah. And they are telling me that at the strike of the thunder, <laughs> you must buy a K31. Oh man, look there at that. There it is. One. Listen. What did I just say? There you go. All right, let's crank some rounds out. All right, I am feeling lucky. <laughs> I'm gonna go for the gopher on the left at 300. Okay, we're, we're the, uh, to the right there, we're? Yeah, okay. the right set, but the left. Yeah, go for it. Go, go for it. <laughs> All right, you missed him just in front of his belly to the right. Okay. Give it just a slight hold to the left. Good shooting. Woo! Do that again. That's some damn good rifle shooting right there. Good accuracy. Good shooting. Keep doing that. Man, you can barely see him. Keep doing that. About a three inch group. Wow. All right, so short of that one that you just missed, that last shot, other than that one, you got three shots that are stacked into probably about two inches. Whew. So that's, that's good. Wow, I mean, that's you're, you're putting bullets within two inches of each other at 300 yards in a heavy wind and a thunderstorm. I'll take that any day. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good shoot. Nice. Good wow. shoot. Well, guys, we had some lightning storms, and that has now turned into a light rain. So we've got a, a raincoat here on, uh, on Remington. Yep. We're going to take a few shots. We painted uh, some of the steel white there on the left for you just to make them a little bit easier to shoot. We're going to have you take some shots at that. And uh, you're shooting a really good group there on awesome. the uh, plate on the right. We're going to okay. go have a look at it in a minute. So why don't you have some fun and uh, let's do some shooting. Don't have to tell me twice. <laughs> How you like that rifle so far? Oh, it is a dream to shoot. Whenever you're ready. All right. Gonna go for that coyote. Go for the coyote. Right in the leg. Bring your hold up just a, a hair. Okay. Right in the neck, good shot. Awesome. Keep that hold. Oh. All right, that hit the leg of the uh, target stand. <laughs> That's yeah. the second time you've hit the leg on target stand since you've been <laughs> shooting with us. I like it, what can I say? <laughs> All right. Just under his neck. Yep. Right below your second shot. Tell you what though, the rain makes it hard to see through irons. Rain Just makes it hard to see bit. and it's also a challenge. That's okay, good practice. Yep. Right over his back. Yeah. Yeah, you're getting some, uh, you're getting some vertical stringing a little bit. Yeah. Horizontal wise, they're, they're pretty much in a line, but you're getting a little bit of string and probably about eight inches tall. Okay. Probably but, just, uh, you know, that coyote is an odd size target. Right, I've it, been moving hard around a little bit of where I'm aiming on him. Yeah. So I'll probably go for that uh, silhouette. Okay. 
see if I yeah, can that, uh, get Yeah, that coyote is a really odd target to hit with the iron sights. Um, yeah. You know, especially 300 yards. That's pretty pretty good distance to be shooting a target like that. Right. It's a tricky, tricky target. We, we tend to be a little jaded and we end up uh, shooting rounds and D28 and things like that and we forget how uh, important it is to know how to shoot at, uh, you know, animal type targets too. Good. Left side? Yeah, left side. Okay. Just uh, go for it. Wow, that uh, shot hit about uh, nine inches to the right, oddly enough. Yeah, yeah, I definitely pulled that one. It's okay. Pretty hard kicking little gun. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, now, now you're getting a little bit of a uh, horizontal stream. I don't know if that's trigger control or if, I mean, the wind's not really blowing. No, that's just me. It's pretty easy to <laughs> uh, call your shots with this gun, though. That is nice. Yep. Now that, sh that shot hit to the uh, right about maybe six inches. Bitty, bitty target. That one felt good. Take a few more shots. Yep, you got a few rounds to burn there. Why don't you see if you can hit that gopher on the left over there? Nice challenging target oh, yeah. to hit. Aim small, miss small. Absolutely. It's weird what these guns will do. I mean, I've noticed uh, shooting just standard uh, iron-sided K31s at 600 yards like we've done before, and I've hit that 8-inch that popper at 6 really? with open sights, but I think it's just due to the fact that you're aiming at a smaller target, and as long as the gun's sighted in pretty good, I mean, that round has to go somewhere, you know? Yeah. The gun's definitely capable of it. I'll tell you what. Oh, yeah, whenever you're ready. Just low, right at his feet. Okay. Your uh, windage looked pretty good. Okay. Right in the head. Good shot. Nice. Go for head shot at 300 yards. All right, that was perfectly in center with the previous shot, but about maybe six and a half, maybe seven inches low. Okay. Down near his, his belly. Good shot. Nice. Right in the center mass. That'd be a, a, a dead gopher. That's so impressive that this gun can hit a gopher with irons from this distance, like no scope, anything like that. It's really impressive. Good shooting. Thank you. Good shooting. Let's go have a look at your first group there. Sounds good. All right. All right, so that's not a terrible effort here from Remington on his first go with a K31. Your first round hit high here. Right. And then once you kind of settled into your point of aim, you printed this group down here. So That's we, not too bad. Yeah, if we went by those four shots, center to center, it's about a four and a half inch group. Now, okay. if you added the extreme spread of your one flyer there, yeah. you're sitting on probably about a six and a half inch group. That gives a lot to improve on. That's really right. not terrible. No, for the first um, time shooting this gun, yeah. I'm happy a, with a lot it. of guys with, uh, with good hand loading can get these groups a little tighter. Okay. And obviously more time behind the gun. Yeah. I mean, it's your first time. That's right. That's probably a better group than I ever shot at this distance for my first time with a K31. So cool. I'll tell you what, uh, we're going to repaint this gong and a few of the others. That's not terrible. And you can see here on your uh, little gopher, I know he's a little muddy from the rain, uh, but you had several nice... Uh, Oh yeah, clusters right there on the gopher that were just kind of right low there. there. Yeah, not terrible shooting at all. Cool. I'll I think, take it uh, any day. 
yeah, it gives you, it gives you a lot to improve on and uh, it's definitely fun, right? Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, I'll tell you what, we can't end this video without me getting to shoot some rounds. So I'm gonna try to shoot a group two. Let's just see how I fare. Uh, I bet Remington here could probably outshoot me, but let's give it a try. We'll see. All right, Remington's doing a dang good job with the K31. Uh, it's always cool to see young folks getting out and enjoying mill serps. It's very important to me personally as a shooter and as a Second Amendment guy. Uh, it's a very big deal to me when folks want to get out and shoot these old mill serps because they're so much fun and they're so accurate as you can see. Um, these diopters are running pretty good. This is actually Chad's rifle. Um, this particular one, I think I already said, it's a 1945 uh, K31. And uh, a rifle like this set up with the diopters can represent pretty expensive cost. I think uh, Chad got into a bit of a bidding war on the sites and ended up having uh, well over 500 bucks just in the diopters. So they tend to be a little expensive. Uh, but you don't you don't have to have diopters to shoot a K31 accurately. Uh, the standard iron sights do pretty dang well as we've displayed somewhat decently in the past. I'm gonna try to hopefully uh, show this thing doing somewhat justice. All right. A lot of you folks may not know the ring on the back of these things is a safety, okay? So you rotate that in, it locks the bolt shut and puts the gun on safe. Pretty interesting little factoid. I'm gonna shut up and, uh, and just shoot this thing. I'm gonna try my best, that's all I can do. The diopters are great. That one was just about center. Nice. <laughs> nice little rain to tighten your groups. <laughs> that one was 10 o'clock, about on the edge of the huh. steel. All right. Black on black is a little hard to see for me, but we're trying. Decent group. Let's see. You're favoring about the top half of the target, just to let you know. 10-4. Nice shot. <clears throat> Good. Looks like that one uh, went high and right, am I right? Nope, that was low and left actually. Low and left a bit? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna load up some more rounds here. And I'm going to try the little gong on the, uh, on the left over there to see if possibly I might be able to favor a little bit better. I'm finding that black a little bit difficult to see against the black on the front of this front sight post. Yeah, absolutely. It's tough. It is. And as you get older, your eyesight does not get better. It gets worse. <laughs> Something to look forward to. <laughs> yeah. Enjoy that good eyesight while you can. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good Here's shot. The top. No, that was like about center. That was good.
That was off the right shoulder. Really? Yep. All right then. These guns generally shoot pretty good. That was good. Right in the chest. Shoulder on the right side. Right in the neck. All right, I got a few good. rounds left. I'm gonna take a couple of shots at some other targets of opportunity just for fun. You have a good group going on the uh, white silhouette for yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I feel like uh, I can see that one a little better. Yeah, the contrast really helps. Yes, the contrast helps, not only with the background uh, back there, but also with the front sight. Mm -hmm. I have to say that, uh, you know, it's really overcast out here. We, we do have a light rain, which I'm sure isn't helping much either. But um, one thing to consider too is that, uh, you know, there's not a lot of light coming in this diopter iris. And uh, it can make picking up those sights a little difficult. It's still fun though, don't get me wrong. No excuses, just more shooting. Right on. All right. All right, now this is where I'm wishing I had a younger pair of eyes. <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm gonna hit that go fur. Okay. Right side, off its nose. <laughs> a little turd. <laughs> Smack him. Boom, headshot. Right off the nose again. About six inches off the right. Wow. Hmm. I wonder if the action screws on this thing are walking out. That's another thing uh, that's important, guys, when you're shooting these mill serps. Always make sure your action screws are kind of torqued down to, like, you know, a good, consistent torque. Those action screws back out. You can definitely get some accuracy anomalies. I'm not saying that's what's happening here. I'm just saying it's a tip. Just one thing to consider. You know, these guns are old. Sometimes the screws back out. That's something that's important to think about, okay? Above its head, about six inches high. <laughs> that is a tricky little target to shoot. Yes, it is. All right, I'm gonna try the gopher, or the uh, coyote rather, since uh, okay. you were having some difficulty with it, and I'm not gonna lie, I normally do as well. Yeah. All right, we're gonna give it a try. It just looks like a white blur down there. It's, mm. it's hard to make out any real details. Agreed. But, be that as it may, I'm gonna try to drill one right in his head. Do it. Right below him on the nose area. All right, dang it. I'm gonna get a headshot on this coyote. <laughs> All right. Right shoulder at the front leg. Hit him in the foot. Very Same cool. leg. All right, let's uh, go down range. We'll have a look and see how horribly I did. <laughs> and we'll go from there.
All right, I didn't do too terrible considering it's my first time using diopters as well. Uh, I'm familiar with K31s and I've shot them a good bit. This is the first time I've ran the diopters as well. Okay. Uh, this particular gun of Chad's here, uh, this is really the first time we've had it out to the range. So you're kind of learning along with us. Oh yeah. Something else we discovered here that I think is something interesting that I want to kind of point out with the K31 is the tension of this barrel band right here on the front, the front barrel band. I did notice that uh, I believe that the flyers you were getting, yeah. I'm also getting a flyer or two as well. We see in my group here that we had a, a low flyer. I might have pulled a shot slightly to the right, but otherwise about a six and a half inch group, not terrible. Not bad at all. It gives us something to improve on there and uh, kind of figure out what's what. On the D20 or the, uh, the 22 inch round over there on the right, uh, not quite as good of a group, probably about a foot, not as good as we wanted to see. But one thing that we saw consistently is that you and I both yeah. were getting some flyers and That's odd right. anomalies in our group. So you mm -hmm. would have like a cluster of shots that were really good and then a few rounds maybe hitting off to, you know, every five shots or so, seeing one kind of hitting low. Yeah, hard um, to explain this once other any, than Anytime equipment. a gun, you know, throws a flyer like that, you should always suspect bedding, I would imagine, as being something to consider. Now, the K31s are uh, pretty much free-floated from the front of the action all the way up to the barrel band. Now, early Swiss rifles had what was called an accuracy collar in them, and those accuracy collars were intended to be able to torque the barrel bands down on the collar, and then the inside of the collar w is what would provide the free float of the front of the barrel yep. to provide that excellent level of accuracy that they were expected to have. I think what we're going to probably end up doing, uh, and I'm sure Chad can agree with me here, he's off camera, but what we're going to do is we're going to do a separate bench top video on accurizing your K31 and how to ring the most accuracy out of your K31 service ri rifle, because there are some little tricks and things that you can do uh, to kind of help them along and, and make them shoot better. Now. One thing I will say, that's some excellent shooting on Remington's part. Uh, he is an Thank excellent you. marksman. Appreciate it. I think, uh, I think the Second Amendment is in safe hands, isn't Good. it? Good. So, so. Uh, anyway, if you like these kind of videos, let me know. We'll do more of them. Uh, I think we are going to probably revisit the K31 here with the diopters, maybe to 600 yards. Uh, the weather kind of chased us off today. We didn't have an opportunity to do it. Uh, but Remington, I hope you enjoyed yourself. I did. Thank you very much, Eric. All right. Yeah. Anytime. You're always welcome down here in our neck of the woods. Yep. We always uh, support youth shooting sports and getting uh, our youth out here to shoot, especially stuff like these K31s and service rifles, because, you know, the small bore stuff, 22s, air rifles, that's a great place to start and a great oh, yeah. place to train. Fantastic. And it really uh, helps get rid of bad habits and make sure, I mean, you, you've got air rifles and 22s that can shoot one whole group, so you know exactly what's going on in your technique. Mm -hmm. It's a great training aid, but it's also cool to see uh, you know, a lot of these young folks getting out here and shooting some of these mill serps. It's really cool. They're fun. They are. Fun. Absolutely. So before we leave, tell them your Instagram uh, handle there. That's right. You can follow me at Little Remington, all one word, and Remington spelled just like the gun company. I post a lot of cool content, a lot of fly fishing pictures, some hiking ones of my travels up north up at college. It's a good show. Awesome. Thank hey, you. Well, uh, appreciate you guys watching. Thanks Thank for you. coming down, Remington. Absolutely. We'll do this again sometime. Sounds great, Eric. All right. See you. Bye.